So I'm a big fan of carrying a haversack. It allows me to keep items that I'm constantly using or items that I happen to pick up off the trail and want to utilize later into a quick convenient pouch without breaking into my backpack. Uh, this is a considered like a standard size haversack. This is 12 inches by about 14 inches. Uh, I have two other haversacks that are bigger. I actually prefer the larger ones for general use. But today I want to make something a little bit smaller. I'm going to carry this smaller haversack that I'm going to be making inside another bag so I have to fit specific dimensions. So I'm going to be using this one as a pattern. So for material today we're going to be using oil cloth from Tent Smiths. Uh, this is a little bit extra I bought when I made my hood for my watch coat. So this is going to work out really well. You can make your own oil skin or you could also use wax canvas and it would give you a good waterproof haversack. But in this case I'm looking for the smallest, lightest uh, haversack that I can get away with. So this is going to be perfect to work with. So the haversack is going to be a real simple envelope design. My end result I want is going to be 12 inch haversack, 12 inch high. So I'm going to have to cut 24 inches, it's going to get folded in half, plus the flap. So on a 12 inch haversack I would like a 6 inch flap for about full coverage. So that's going to give me a total piece I need of 30 inches. Now I'm going to add a half inch to that and give me a quarter inch hem on top and bottom. Now I'm going to trace this out and we'll get it cut. So I've got my length marked out. Now the width is going to be 9 inches. So same thing, I'm going to add a half inch for a hem. So I'm going to mark 9 and a half inches. So I've got it all laid out. Now this is the nice thing about making custom gear. Uh, this bag is going to slide into another specific pocket that I have. So no existing haversack made is going to work. So this is going to be made just for my needs. But here's the issue. A normal haversack, because it's such a simple design, you always end up with everything goes to the bottom. So no matter what you're looking for in a haversack, start on the bottom because that's where everything ends up. Uh, in this situation, I don't have much space, so I'm making it to slide specifically into a pocket, and I can't afford to have the bulk like this. So I'm going to put a pocket. Uh, it's going to be approximately the size of my compass, my duct tape, uh, you know, maybe a three-inch pocket, uh, just under the top of the haversack. So what that'll do is that'll, you know, keep the tendency of everything from dropping down. I'll be able to separate this and add things a little bit higher. Now, the more pockets in a haverstack, you start to lose the whole point of this because now there's multiple places that thing could be, but this is what I need for my application. So I've got my haversack body cut out as well as the pocket. So this pocket's full width. This is uh, nine and a half inches wide, and I wanted a three inch pocket. I ended up cutting a six inch piece so I could double it. I'm probably not going to need to do that, but again, I have no pattern, and I'm just kind of playing this by ear. So here's the process. I'm just folding this over. I eyeballed about a quarter inch. I put a couple stick pins in it. Now I put them, you know, horizontally the way the stitch is going to go. That way the uh, the foot of the sewing machine will just ride right over it. You know, this is not a long sew. This is not a big deal. You could do this by hand. I got the machine, so I'm going to use it. So I'm all hemmed up here. Now I'm going to mock up where the pouch is going to sit and where I'm going to place my pocket. So I want my finished product to be 12 inches high and that's going to include the flap. So you know I'm going to run stitches up the side here and then this is going to be your closure. Now 
and right now that is exactly 12 inches. I'm going to give myself a little bit more. So I'm going to move this up. Give myself a little bit more flab. So as it sits right now, the haversack is going to be like 11 and 3 quarters inches, and I think that's about fine. That'll let it disappear into my bag that I'm going to put it into. So I'm going to make myself a real quick reference mark right here, right here. That's not going to show up on camera, but it's going to give me something I can find. So now, this is going to be the top of the pocket, or the top of the pouch itself. And I'm going to place the pocket in here. So everything the same color, this isn't going to show up real well. What I did on the pocket itself is I sewed a hem along three edges and one side's bare. So the bare side is going to get sewn to the body of the haversack and then it's going to flip up and then that's going to give me my pocket. So again this is the unhemmed end of my pocket and it's going to get sewn just like this. So as it sits now this is going to be the depth of my pocket. Now generally I carry a K&R compass. Uh, this is an older Sylvia model. I have several of these, so and this is going to be an emergency kit, so this is what I'm going to include in this kit. Uh, this does not have a signal mirror on it. It works great when you're laying out lines on a map and plotting your course. Uh, not quite as well when you're navigating, but again, this is an emergency kit. I have several of these. I'm going to utilize it. So I want to set up this pocket so that my compass is going to be concealed in here and go all the way in. And, and it does that. So this is about four inches. Uh, also, probably my headlamp might go in here. Definitely a small roll of Gorilla Tape is going to go in here. And that all should fit into this pocket. So now I know my edges are square. And I've got two black marks that's going to be the top of the haversack. And instead of going right at the edge, I'm going to come down about a quarter inch. Let's make it a half inch. And I'm going to come down from this side a half inch. This is going to unfold, and this is going to be my sew line. Okay, so top of the haversack is going to be right here. I'm going to put a stitch along here, and this is going to fold up and it'll get captured when I fold it in half and make my sides. So at this point it's time to stop and think about what you're going to do for a strap. The uh, Self Reliance Outfitters haversack, which I'm basing this off of, uh, uses an oil skin cloth uh, strap. That works out really great. However, the material that I'm using is kind of precious to me. I don't have that much of it. Uh, shipping's horrendous. So what I have, I've got to really uh, be careful of use for it. So I was looking at some tubular uh, webbing. Didn't like that as much either. Probably just because the color I have I don't like with this. 
but I do have some cotton webbing. This is like one inch cotton webbing. This is from Joanne Fabrics. I had this from another project. Found it in one of my bins. So I think I'm going to go with this. So I can just mock this up real simple as far as length. You know, I want it to hang about waist high. Okay, knock it up again. That'll work out real well for me. Now, the oil skin haversack from Self Reliance Outfitters is, has a backing on it. You know, this lets, uh, you know, it's less likely that the threads are going to pull through. Uh, this is a larger haversack the size of this one is going to dictate what I put in it. Normally I always carry my water bottle in my haversack. With this size haversack and the location I'm going to put it, that's not going to happen with this. So I am not going to go with a backing, I'm going to go a straight cotton webbing uh, sewed to the back of the oil skin. So it's going to look about like this. Uh, just got a couple pins holding it in place, making my life easier. So I've got the bottom tacked in. To establish how high up I sew, I've got those black sharpie reference marks. Uh, so don't be afraid to mark on this. This is yours. Uh, and then I made a cross line that's going to get covered up with thread anyway. That's how high up and across I'm going to sew on the webbing. So you can see inside a little better than you can on the outside uh, how I sewed it. You know, I just went up all the sides and then made a cross across the middle. You know, I, maybe I over sewed it. Uh, I don't know. But this thing's not going to fall apart for lack of thread. Okay, so the strap is sewn on now. Can you see how the little thing's going to look here? Now I took the pocket, there's a little pocket that we sewed in here. Now this is just pinned into place. When I sew the long seam, that's all going to be one continual seam. And again I have my two black index marks. And before it's too late to change anything, I'm going to check my size. still right at 11 3 quarter so everything's worked out great so with the pocket pinned into place here I'm going to you know hold my black index marks and then sew these outside seams we're getting close to a finished product so you want to make sure you don't sew your flap shut you want to make sure you don't sew the, uh, the strap so there's just more chances of you screwing up So I'm super stoked how this haversack turned out. Uh, to me it looks every bit as good as a factory original one. You know, it's probably not, but I made it myself. If it breaks, I know how to fix it. Uh, making your custom gear like this it allows you to put pockets where you want them, make the pockets for the correct size for the items that you're carrying. Uh, so this worked out real well. Uh, one thing I'll do in another video, I'll show you how I'm going to minimize my 10-piece kit to fit in such a small haversack, and I'll show you why I sewed such a small haversack. This has been Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. See you next time.